You're listening to The Alex Jones Show. Big Brother. Mainstream media. Government cover-ups. You want answers? Well, so does he. He's Alex Jones on the GCN Radio Network. And now, live from Austin, Texas, Alex Jones. Welcome back to the Alex Jones Show on this Friday, December 19th, 2014. I'm David Knight, your host today. We are expecting Alex Jones to join us in this hour from the road, but he is on the road, so we're not sure of the exact time of that. We're also going to be joined by our reporters in Washington State, Joe Biggs and Darren McBreen. They're there, of course, to follow up on the story that we uh, broke, I guess, over the weekend uh, about the person coming up to the MRAP vehicle asking the police who were displaying it at a Walmart uh, what this thing did. When they started telling her what it did, she asked the obvious question, why do we need that in a small town? And he replied, well, for constitutionalists, people who stockpile ammunition and weapons. Not for the police who are stockpiling military vehicles and militarized uh, uh, weapon systems. So we had a back and forth as as the uh, we tried to contact the police uh, chief there, the actually the sheriff there. We tried to contact him for comment uh, to try to be fair, to try to get his comments. Not something we're required to do. They did not contact us back. Rather, the following Monday. They posted uh, a video on their Facebook page criticizing Infowars. So we wanted to go out there and get some answers because there's a rally that's going to be held tomorrow. I believe it's at 2 o'clock. Uh, you can check our uh, website, Infowars.com. We'll give you the details of the exact location, the exact time of where that is. If you're in the area, if you're in the Spokane area, if you're in the Idaho area, there are people there who are very concerned, who want to have a dialogue, who want to ask a cop. That was the hashtag that blew up on uh, the interview from CNN. A lot of people across the country are outraged by the way the police are uh, not punished for excessive use of force, the way they're being goaded into the excessive use of force. And these militarized vehicles are part of the way that they're being goaded into over-the-top force into rules of engagement, if you will, that we have never seen from the police in terms of looking at themselves as military organizations. Paul Joseph Watson was just on with us, and yesterday we talked about the fact that the California Highway Patrol is now describing itself as a paramilitary organization to prospective recruits, people who might want to get a job there. They've posted on their site in multiple times and multiple ways that they are a paramilitary organization. And if you have military experience, they might be interested in talking to you. Well, Spokane area, and of course, I don't know if the relationship to the Spokane police, to the Spokane Sheriff's Department, if there is a relationship even. Nevertheless, even that area has had its problems with excessive police violence. Uh, there was a case that was settled for several million dollars. Actually, it's a little over, uh, it was $1.67 million uh, with the family of a man that was uh, killed by a police officer. His name was Otto Zem. He was beaten, shocked, and shocked and hogtied by police officers after he was accused erroneously of theft. That was something that happened back in 2006. It took five years for it to go to trial. Uh, nevertheless, uh, that not only was there a civil judgment given to the family, but the jury convicted a Spokane police officer, Carl Thompson, of needlessly beating him and then lying to cover up his actions. That's good. When you have people that are doing bad actions in your police department and they get convicted, that's what we want to see. It's not possible, and we, we'll never get to the point where there's not any bad police officers, just like we're never going to get to the point where there's never any bad uh, gun owners or people just in general society. You're always going to have good and bad people in any society. It's a cross-section, as Frank Serpico has said. The real question is, can the system purge those out? I think one of the most important things that can be done is not necessarily uh, body cameras. That was, they were investigated by the Justice Department. They just wrapped up and put a uh, report out uh, just this week, December 16th, 2014, of the Spokane Police Department, uh, reviewing their practices. Some of the right recommendations are body cams. And yet, we just had another death in Spokane where a police officer who had a body camera didn't have it turned on. And even when they have it turned on, in some localities, they're not prosecuted, not even indicted. 
That's why Matt Shea, one of the representatives there in Washington, we're going to be talking to at the rally tomorrow, reporters will be talking to. That's why he pointed out we need to have oversight, not only of the police officers, but of their curriculum. Stay with us. We'll be the right average back. person's life is filled with unexpected challenges. Unlock the energy it takes to defeat these daily beasts with super male or super female vitality, specifically designed to assist the body in regulating proper hormone balance to create superior vitality in males and females. Supercharge and conquer your world at InfoWarsLife.com or call 1-888-253-3139. The government's Department of Homeland Security is buying up loads of ammo. At the same time, they're restricting civilians' rights to own and purchase firearms. Can you put two and two together? Infidel Body Armor can stop every round, including hollow points and 308 sniper rounds. Is reasonably priced and fully legal. But for how long? Go to InfidelBodyArmor.com, spelled I-N-F-I-D-E-L, BodyArmor.com. Infidel Body Armor just won't quit. From the water table, to our soils, to the atmosphere itself, our world is becoming more and more toxic each and every day. But it's not just the air outside that's toxic. Indoor air has been shown to have two to five times higher concentrations of pollutants than even outdoor air. And most Americans spend 90% of their time inside using toxic chemicals within their homes. There are more than 42 million smokers in the United States. Well over a thousand types of mold and mildew linked to numerous conditions. And don't forget the fact that six million Americans live with pets they're allergic to as well. When I began to research these statistics, it was clear to me it was time to start cleansing my lungs in order to combat the toxic environment that we cannot escape but that we can fight back against. Made with organic and wild cultivated herbs and manufactured in the USA, the new InfoWars Life Lung Cleanse is here in a convenient spray bottle that can be brought with you throughout any toxic environment. Now available exclusively at InfoWarsLife.com or by calling toll-free 888-253-3139. 2015 is almost here, and with it comes those New Year's resolutions to finally transform your body the way you want it. There's a reason over 88% of New Year's resolutions fail. Make this year different by equipping yourself with Oxy Powder, the next level in cleansing the body naturally. Using Super Oxygenation Oxy Powder, available through InfoWarsLife.com, gently cleanses the body while you sleep with easy capsules. InfoWars Nightly News Director Rob Dew has been using Oxy Powder with incredible success. Took it that first day, and then I took it for six more days after that. 12 pounds melted off in about a week, I'd say a week, seven days. And I, I've been able to keep it off, too. My wife is like, wow, you look really good. And I'm like, I know. I don't. I, I guess it's this Oxy Powder. 2015 can be different. Diet and exercise are important, but a lot of us have already tried that. Oxy Powder flushes it out. Secure your Oxy Powder at InfoWarsLife.com. That's InfoWarsLife.com or 888-253-3139. From his Central Texas Command Center, deep behind enemy lines, the information war continues. It's Alex Jones and the GCN Radio Network. Welcome back to the Alex Jones Show. I'm David Knight, your host today on this Friday, December 19th, 2014. Alex Jones is hopefully going to be joining us on in this hour. He's on the road and we're trying to establish contact in the... Uh, Last hour, we're going to be talking to our reporters who are in Washington State, Joe Biggs and Darren McBreen. And just before the break, uh, we were talking about what is happening in Spokane. They have just finished an investigation of the police department. And again, I don't know if there's a relationship at all between the Spokane Police Department and the Sheriff's Department. Our reporters are there because of what was said about an MRAP vehicle. To talk about that program, there's a large... Uh, protest. It's going to happen tomorrow. Uh, I think it's at 2 o'clock, but you can get the details of the location and the time at InfoWars.com. But we're also concerned about uh, the fact that this sheriff, who pushed back against these comments, said they were taken out of context. They clearly were not. The lady asked the uh, deputy why they had use of a, why they had a need for a vehicle like this, and he immediately replied, for the constitutionalists. We know where that comes from. That comes from the Southern Poverty Law Center. That is a narrative that's been fed out as part of training. It's been put out as part of scenarios that they have worked with. And, of course, this sheriff has in the past called in the Southern Poverty Law Center to train his personnel. And it was 
good people within the sheriff's department that blew the whistle on that, that exposed that to the community at large and caused that to be shut down, as it should have been. Southern Poverty Law Center has attacked anybody that don't, they don't agree with politically, labeling them as terrorists. And so there are good people within the system. We see that there was a settlement uh, recently of a shooting that took a long time to uh, to go through the courts. There was a civil settlement to the family of the man who was unjustifiably uh, killed, as well as a conviction of the police officer who shot him and then covered it up. That's the thing that should happen when these things come to light. We'll never, as I said in the last segment, have a situation where we have nothing but good cops. They're a cross-section of society, and just like you have good and bad people in society, you have good and bad people in the police force. The question is, will the system be able to purge them out? As we were talking to Representative Matt Shea from the area, he had some very good suggestions. It's not just that we need to have outside oversight when there's an incident like this to make sure that everyone in the community feels that everything has been done to serve justice. We need to have someone who is not connected with that police department to oversee these trials. But we also need to have civilian oversight or community oversight. I, I don't want to use civilian because that implies that they're military and we don't want to feed that mentality even though they're self-identifying the California Highway Patrol as a they're self-identifying themselves as a paramilitary organization. They repeat that over and over again. But the community needs to have oversight of the police department, not just in terms of when things go wrong, but even more importantly, oversight of their training. That was what uh, Matt Shea, representative for Washington State, said when we had him on earlier this week. So we're going to be talking to our reporters who are there. It is a major problem. We've had, as we reported back in February of this year, this headline from Infowars.com, Americans killed by cops now outnumber Americans killed in the Iraq war. And we can't even get the complete statistics on that because they're not keeping those kind of statistics. And if they believe that they are at risk from the general public as they're being taught, that we are a threat to them, that they need to have programs that go through our social media postings, our purchasing records to evaluate our threat to them, so that they can immediately, when they pull you over, have any interaction with you at all, they can identify your threat level. Are you a green, a yellow, or a red threat to them? Think about how incredibly dangerous that is. Besides the violation of privacy, for your government to profile and label people like that. Are they going to get it wrong? Of course they're going to get it wrong. They are going to label people red who are not a threat to them. Maybe they're a threat to the political regime, like the Tea Party is a threat to Obama, but they're not physical threats to the, to the police, yet they will label people like that, and many people are going to get killed who should not be killed because it's going to scare the officers because of their training. Their real risk, as we've seen, half of them are about the same number that are getting shot are getting killed in car accidents, and half of those people are getting killed because they're not wearing seatbelts. They have a very low use of seatbelts percentage-wise among the police nationally. An even greater threat to their health is morbid obesity. We had this report from the Daily Mail saying that U.S. cops have the highest rate of obesity amongst any profession in the country. Along with firefighters and security guards, nearly 41% of boys in blue, they say, are obese, according to a study by the American Journal of Preventive Medicine. So there you go. The health and lifestyle that you live is a greater threat to you. The fact that you don't wear a seatbelt, those are much greater threats to you than the populace. You don't need to be on a hair trigger. I want to go to some health news. There was a story that just broke, uh, it was on Reuters, saying that autism, in a new study, has now been linked to particulate air pollution. Now, I think there's an interesting backstory to this because this was not a, a study that was necessarily done by the EPA. I don't know who paid for this. This is a Harvard uh, School of Public Health study. But I think it's very interesting that the budget that was just passed by the GOP, uh, primarily, they were the ones who put the budget together, they cut the funding of the EPA. The EPA has had its funding cut for several years now, but I think this was a shot across the bow because Obama has said that he is going to enact uh, climate change legislation. He's talked about a war on coal. And after the election, he said that there's nothing that the new majority Republicans can or will do about it. He's going to get his 
uh, climate agenda through. So I think that their cut of the EPA budget was really kind of a shot across the bow, saying we, 